do you think it's normal to be gay? And there's, you have any problem with people being gay? And then no, I do on not religious have a problem. Basis, et cetera, no problem. Yeah. So then the yeah. second, yeah, of course, talking about trans, I heard you on Meet the Press say that trans was a mental disorder, which yeah, you know, it was in the DSM four, I guess, or whatever the latest one was, five, just I up think, to you know, yeah. yeah, just to a couple of years ago, and now it's changed. So maybe explain why you think differently about those two things. One, you think it's fine to be gay, but you think it's a mental disorder in all likelihood if people want to transition. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I want to leave you with a good sense of where I'm at on, on these issues, right? So I think it's at least curious that when you take the LGBTQIA plus value set and, and, and vision for what the movement stands for, it does require you to adopt simultaneously conflicting beliefs at once, right? The gay rights movement was predicated on the idea, which I'm quite sympathetic to, that the sex of the person that you're attracted to is hardwired on the day you're born. But now with the T component of that same movement that now says your own gender is completely fluid over the course of your own life. And I think if we're not going to observe the tension between these two observations, I think that we're purposefully having our heads stuck in the sand. I think what's happening in many cases is somebody who claims to be trans is really just gay. And part of what we're saying is it's not okay to be gay. So to answer your first question, part of what the trans movement is effectively telling people is that it's not okay to be gay. You know who else says that? Iran. Actually, Iran is a nation that if you are gay, they force you to undergo gender conversion surgery. It's not that different than what's baked into the ideological premise of much of the trans movement here. And so I, I just want you to come from the fact there's a lot of people in the GOP who will offer surface level stuff here. I mean, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. Gender dysphoria is what I've said is a mental health disorder. I've been very precise. Let's take the intersex case out of it. Kleinfelter syndrome, Jacobs syndrome, right? Kleinfelter is XXY. Jacobs syndrome is XYY. These are ultra rare. They exist. They are real. For the purpose of our discussion, though it's under the broad trans umbrella, I'm going to take that out of it because that's not a mental health disorder. That's a genetic reality. But now let's go back to the conflicting supposition, there's no gay gene, yet the sex of the person you're attracted to, we accept for civil rights purposes, is heart riot on the day you're born. Yet there are X and Y chromosomes, and yet your own biological sex slash gender is now completely fluid over the course of your life. There's a tension there. And I think that tension is best explained by the way we've treated it for most of our national history, for most of our medical history, all the way through actually, I think the DSM-5, not just the four, as a mental health condition. And I think the compassionate thing to do is not to affirm, especially when it's a kid, to affirm a kid's confusion. I think the compassionate thing to do is to recognize that there's some other psychological struggle manifesting itself in this form. And it is cruel to affirm that kid's confusion. I, I met two young and women. And by affirm, Chloe you mean surgery Katie. or hormone surgery, therapy. Surgery, hormone therapy, exactly. I met, so you I would limit that to when you're an old adult, 18 years 18. old? Yes. And you would ban There's two parents. women I met here in New Hampshire, literally yeah. like where I am right now. Yeah. Who are in their 20s that badly regret undergoing double mastectomies. One of them underwent a hysterectomy. Both of them underwent puberty blockers. So even if the parents and doctors and regret, agreed with it, you would say they can't make that decision for the child. Just like you can't get a tattoo before the age of 18 in most, it, it, what we say is a, a decision that you are likely to regret many in many cases, at least, likely to regret later in life, we let you make that decision as an adult. And I do believe we live in a free society. As an adult, you're free to identify how you want, are free to wear what you want. But kids aren't the same as adults. And even among adults, there's a difference between living your life freely and expecting that everybody else changes their linguistic and traditional understandings in sports and traditional understandings in locker rooms and traditional understandings in language, that's a difference. And so I don't believe in a tyranny of the majority, but I don't believe in a tyranny of the minority either. Do you think this topic is over-indexed on right now and is a really important yes. topic of this presidency? Or do you think this is like some sort of culture wars thing that this actually isn't that important to the national discussion should be held it, privately by I, parents? I, I appreciate you asking that, Jason, is I think I feel this way about a lot of the topics, right? From mm -hmm. Affirmative action, I, I share racial your, wokeism I share to this. position on that. I think like, why is this the most important topic? Yeah. This is, this is interesting because it's a symptom. It's interesting only to the extent that it is a symptom of the deeper void, of the deeper vacuum. 
And I think the mental health epidemic is not limited to gender dysphoria, anxiety, depression, drug right. usage, fentanyl, suicide. These let, let's have the conversation more holistically. These are symptoms of the deeper void. And all I care about is running through these topics without somebody holding the line of defense by stopping us to get to a discussion about that void to say, no, this is exactly what that kid is. And you're wrong to think about it as a mental health disorder. I think that's unproductive.